Hey everybody, welcome into this video editing tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. And today we're going to take a look at concealing the identity of a person in your film footage, concealing their face by pixelating it, and also concealing their voice by doing this sort of hyper deepening and slowing down. And I can't even really emulate it with my own voice because I don't get that deep and it's hard to speak that slowly. We're going to talk about how to do that and also track a moving person within your film footage. Let's take a look at the example here that I have, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So we've got this guy getting out of a, a limousine here at this movie premiere where I was shooting some sort of behind-the-scenes footage, and I'm just going to show you exactly what happens here. So we're panning through the crowd. We've got the guy we want to conceal. Bam, he's out of the limo. He's walking. You can see he's being tracked as he walks, um, and it's we're good to go. Now, over here on this clip, I have some audio, and basically what I want to do is conceal the audio of the guy talking. And you can hear just how sort of garbled, messed up the voice is. So we're going to talk about how to do both of those things here in the Premiere Pro. I'm going to just delete everything here on my timeline, and I'm going to choose this Actors Exit Limo uh, clip. And I'm going to get rid of the soundtrack so we're not deafened by this. And what I'm going to do, the first thing I need to do, is use my little scrubber time head here and find the very first frame where this guy is getting out of the limousine. There he is. I'm going to use my back arrow key and just nudge backward. All right, so there's the very first frame where we can see him. Uh, maybe actually I'll select. Yeah, I'm going to select that frame right there, and I'm going to use my slice tool here and just click once to, to slice the uh, footage there, and I'm going to slide right along until I can't see his face any longer right there, and I'll slice there as well. So we've got this little piece of clip here, and we're going to put this tracking mask with this uh, pixelation effect over his face. It's pretty easy. Let's grab our black arrow tool. Make sure you have that little piece of footage selected, just the little video uh, it's on the video track, I should say. And up here in the effect controls panel, this is kind of where we're going to be working, but we need to get our effect in place, the pixelation effect. We're going to do that by coming down to the effects panel, and we are going to choose one of the video effects, and the video effect we're interested in is under video effects, uh, I believe it's under stylize, there it is, mosaic. So we can drag and drop this right out onto our little video clip there, and you can see we've got too much mosaic, too much pixelation, it looks pretty bad. I'm going to set the horizontal and vertical blocks to 25 each. So 25 and 25, we want it to be you know, pretty pixelated, we don't want to be able to make out the details uh, on his face. But obviously, the problem here is the entire video is pixelated, so what we're going to do is we're going to just select this little circle, it's going to create, as it says, an ellipse mask, a little circular mask, and I can now drag this mask wherever I want. So I'm going to put it over his face, in fact I'm going to just pull down on the top, pull up on the bottom. Uh, maybe like that, scooch it in a little, scooch it over a little, just kind of like that. So now it's just pixelating him. The guy next to him is still free and clear. He's doing his thing. Um, now we can back this up and you can see the mask is not in place. So let's, let's, uh, let's actually start right here. So I'm going to move the mask again. I'm going to move it over his head right there. All right. Now we're not at the first frame. If I use my little plus, uh, well, if I select my, uh, select my sequence here and I use my plus, the plus button on my keyboard, I can zoom in on that sequence and I can see I'm not at all at the first frame of this little clip. No problem though. Uh, we have a couple options over here. Uh, the first one is the track selected forward ma or mask forward, excuse me, which basically if I click it, is going to just go ahead and try to track him as best as Premiere can. It's going to use the detail that it has, and it's going to automatically, you can see, look at all these keyframes it's laying down. Just keyframe after keyframe after keyframe to track him. So I'm going to let this finish up its work. And there we go. It looks like it's completely done. I'm going to zoom out. Well, i got to select the, uh, select the sequence there and use my little minus button to zoom out. And if I just move over this, I can see that it looks like it's doing a really good job. Uh, the problem is here for these first few frames, it's not in the proper place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my effect controls panel here, and I can use my plus button up here to zoom in on my keyframes. I'm right there on that keyframe. In fact, to make sure I'm on the keyframe, I'm going to hit this little arrow, go to next keyframe. I'm exactly in place. And I've got these other arrow button. So I've got this one here that's a tracking backward. So let's just hit that to see if uh, Premiere can automatically track him backward right out of frame. Great. And now when we play through this, right off the bat, we have him tracked just as uh, we want him to be. Now what about this guy? What if we want to hide him as well? But to, to keep things simple, we'll just, well, you know what? No. We need to hide him from the point he comes into frame right here. The problem is if we cut this, we're going to sort of double cut our clip and really kind of foul things up. 
The key is using what's called an adjustment layer. So we're going to create a new adjustment layer here by choosing new item, adjustment layer. And there it is, it's the size of our document, looks good, hit OK, here it is, adjustment layer. I'm going to drag it out and I'm going to place it where I need it. So I need it right here, maybe I need it back, I can use command or control and an arrow key to nudge it backward, uh, I'm using it in the left arrow key by the way. There we go, probably something like that is good, and then I can grab the end of the adjustment layer and drag it to, well, where does he exit frame? He exits frame right about there so I'll drag it to there so now on this adjustment layer this is pretty cool what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just throw another mosaic effect on this I'm gonna drag my mosaic effect and drop it you can see it's throwing mosaic over the whole video but the mosaic effect is really up on this adjustment layer and kind of raining down onto the video so to speak now over here I'm gonna choose again the little circular mask I'm gonna drop it over his head uh, I do want to set my horizontal and vertical blocks to 25 as well I just 25 just works well for this particular video I'm gonna drag this inward drag this inward I drag this sucker down there we go it's over his face now another option we have for tracking this mask if Premiere is having a difficult time automatically picking it up are these two arrows on the very outside the track select mask forward one frame so we can just hit that and Premiere is going to attempt to automatically follow every time I click this arrow it's going to throw you can see a keyframe in place it's going to attempt to automatically follow but if it's not automatically following make sure you have your mask selected you see here the mask is selected you can actually move the mask yourself in between each frame just to make sure you're getting a perfect blur and a perfect coverage uh, again very very important if you're working on a situation where somebody's identity is not to be known in your video and obviously I started the effect here in the middle of my video clip so I can go back I'm just gonna hit the choose next keyframe so I'm starting at that first keyframe I can actually just use my plus button zoom in right there on that first keyframe I can use these you know select previous or select mask backward one frame and I can just mask and track backward as well and just you know click through this click through it and I'm just I'm watching over here on my source monitor making sure that Premiere is picking up and following where it needs to be following and anytime I need to step in and adjust the mask I can do it just drag it and it will automatically uh, be adjusted as it needs to be uh, throughout the animation so I didn't I didn't do the whole thing here for the sake of time but you can see how that would work it's gonna be really really effective and you can conceal the identity of these two guys in one video while everybody else uh, is very much visible and everybody can tell who they are and what's going on alright let's jump back to the test project I've got this podcast here I used to shoot some video for and let's just say for some reason they wanted uh, the audio concealed they don't you, you're not to you're not to be able to tell who's speaking I'll put it to you that way um, so this is actually relatively easy to do but I like to keep things mixed up because if I just do something like speeding up or slowing down the voice it's gonna be pretty easy for somebody if they spend enough time to you know either slow the clip back down or speed the clip back up and sort of undo my voice garbling so I like to go a little bit deeper than that I like to begin by just selecting the audio clip here you can see the audio clip I can actually zoom in on it and uh, I'm gonna hold down my shift key I'm gonna hover over like a1 here and I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel to make this audio waveform a little bit larger just so I can really see it I can check it out and with this selected all the effects that I drag into effect controls are now going to just affect the audio track so I'm gonna go over to effects I'm gonna just close up my video effects I'm gonna go to audio effects the first thing that I want to apply is a high pass filter so I'm gonna apply my high pass effect here and I'm gonna set the cutoff to like 400 Hertz so this is really just gonna trim off some of the highs here video. Is there anything he doesn't do? and you can see there's before there's before and if I turn high pass on it just kind of gives it almost this AM radio feel so that's great we're also gonna throw a low pass effect on it and we're gonna set this to 23,000 so 23,000 it's on the far end of what low pass can handle and this is gonna sort of trim the the bottom of our audio a little bit so we're just really we're doing a lot of damage intentionally uh, to this audio because we we want to make this a very difficult effect to sort of undo uh, the next thing we're gonna do is apply what's called pitch shifter so we're gonna throw a pitch shifter on here and I'm going to you can see pitch shifter shows up here in the effect effects controls panel I'm gonna choose custom setup edit and here we go we've got this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock it down six semitones so I'm gonna just enter negative six for the semitones that's making the voice deeper here if I just play it real quick hear how deep it is if I put it up six semitones they're gonna sound almost like chipmunks 
All right, so just keep that in mind as you're playing with pitch shifter. I want to go deep, though, because that's kind of more stereotypical of what you get in these sort of disguised voice effects. Uh, I'm going to set sense here. I'm going to boost that to about 80. That's going to give us even more distortion, 80, 81, whatever. It's, you know, no big deal. I'm going to go high precision, and then splicing frequency, I'm going to set to 100 hertz, and overlapping, I'll probably push it up to like 20, uh, and then I'll just close this. So I have a sort of the base of my disguise effect in place. If I play it here, video. Is there anything it doesn't do? we've really began to disguise that voice, whether it's a male or a female, it's going to sound very different than you do uh, in real life. And just to top things off, one of the things I like to do is select the video clip and the audio, right click and choose speed and duration and just slow it down a little bit. This, again, we're just throwing another wrinkle in place. So let's slow it down like to 96%. It's just throwing it off a little bit. So we're just really kind of mixing things up, muddling up the audio, and just as a quick uh, quick overview, we applied a high pass at 400 hertz, a low pass at 23,000, a pitch shifter where we knock uh, you know knock it down six uh, semitones, and then we reduce the speed of the whole clip to like about 95 percent ish, 95, 96 percent, and just let that kind of fall where it may. So that's pretty much it. That is how you conceal either the audio of a video you're working on or the visuals. Somebody's you know somebody's look in a video that you're working on using Premiere Pro. Now, if you enjoyed this video, guys, please throw a like on the video. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you miss no videos in the future. And also, leave a comment below. Let me know how you use this effect in your project. I would love to hear. There's some crazy reasons people do this stuff and use this effect. Uh, very important reasons, but also some crazy, fun, interesting reasons as well. I would love to, love to, love to hear how you use it. So, for concealing identity and concealing a voice using Premiere Pro, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.